My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we hear much good news. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ entered into this very world and taught us through word and deed how we may one day join him again in the kingdom of heaven. The parable of the Good Samaritan is but, but one of those stories told by Jesus during his ministry. Jesus told these stories in order to reach us where we are in our lives today. He used images and themes that would be relatable to the people of his time, but also to us today. Yet in these stories, Jesus gives us a bit of a task. In a sense, by telling these parables, Jesus challenges us to try to figure out who we are in the stories that he tells. The story of the Good Samaritan follows soon after the Great Commandment to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And to further stress the importance of being a neighbor, Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan in response to the question, who is my neighbor? Found in verse 29. So as we prepare ourselves to hear the words of our Lord, let us keep in mind that these words were shared in order to help his disciples understand what it means to be a true Christian neighbor to others. Now, let us listen carefully to what Jesus tells us in the parable of the Good Samaritan. A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at this sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. <coughs> the next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you, send, if you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. These are the words of our Lord as they are handed on to us in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. Thanks be to God that this story has been recorded and passed on to us today because it brings us much good news. In this story, Jesus tells us just how far our mercy is to extend if we are to be truly a neighbor. In verse 27, Jesus gave us the commandment to love God and neighbor. In the story of the Good Samaritan, Christ gives us an example of what it means to love our neighbor. My Christian sisters and brothers, this story is not simply telling us to do good things and be good people. No, the gospel message calls for holiness, not mere goodness. We do not know how much we do not know much about the Samaritan man other than he was traveling along a dangerous route. And that when he set out on his journey in the morning, he did not plan on helping this victim of robbers. Much of the same can be said of the priest and the Levite who went before the Samaritan man on the road. They had important places to be and important things to do. If we pause to think back on our schedule for today, or even within this past week, we will most likely find many instances where we could easily relate to the priest and the Levite in this story. They lived in a busy world, and so do we. But how many instances can we find in this same day or this same week where we, 
were like the Good Samaritan that Jesus speaks of. Looking back on this past week, I realized that I failed to live up to this example that Jesus gives in the parable. Way too often I find myself caught up with the busyness of my schedule and the constant struggle to be places, check off tasks, and meet the ever-present deadlines. If we look at the example of the Samaritan, we know that he left on his journey carrying certain things with him. He had the wine and the bandages and the oil. He did not set out on this journey planning to give these away. One can assume that much from reading this passage. What we do know is that when he encountered this man lying on the side of the road, beaten and bloodied and near death, he was willing to part with his worldly possessions in order to be a neighbor to him. This is why Jesus elevates the Good Samaritan in the story the way he did. The type of person Jesus is speaking of is not somebody who originally sets out to do good. This is somebody who sets out to do what they normally do in their daily lives, and they see instances to be holy men and women along the way. This is why the Good Samaritan is elevated to the position where he is in Jesus' eyes. Jesus elevates the Samaritan man who did what he needed to do, even though it was not required of him. He gave what was not required of him under the law. For the priests and the Levites, they were accustomed to the traditions in the temple of sacrificing for God, but it was usually a small portion. For this Samaritan man, we don't know if these were his only worldly possessions. We have no indication that he is a wealthy, that he is wealthy, and that he is only giving a small portion. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is important to remember for this story. Jesus does not say that the man is wealthy. We often place that burden upon him. All we can say is that this man gave what was his and gave generously to the man in need. He freely gives away his valuable possessions to this stranger. He spends a day with him at the inn, caring for him, and when he is done, he does not simply say, I am relieved of this burden you have placed upon me. No, he continues to give of his own personal treasure to make sure that this man is cared for even after he has continued his journey. But the story of the Good Samaritan is more than an example of freely giving your possessions to those in need. The Good Samaritan assumed a great risk in approaching this man. He ran the risk of being ritually impure by touching a man who appeared to be dead. He risked his very life by tending to this man who he knew was a victim of robbers. By seeking to heal this man's wound and save his life, the Good Samaritan binds his fate to this beaten and bloodied man. At any point, the robbers could have returned or been lying in wait for somebody to stoop over and help their first victim. The Good Samaritan assumed all these risks and refused to let them stop him from being a neighbor to the man on the side of the road. But the image that Jesus presents us with in this story does not stop with the Good Samaritan himself. There is also the man lying on the side of the road. What about him? Jesus has a very good idea of the sort of suffering that his disciples will face as they follow Christ. They too will encounter a man who is beaten, bloodied, and near death. These disciples are not yet aware that this man is Jesus Christ our Lord. They're going to encounter Christ beaten and carrying his cross towards crucifixion on Calvary Hill for the sake of our salvation. And how do they respond to this sight? They run and hide, my brothers and sisters. They deny knowing Jesus. Yet this story of the Good Samaritan is remembered and passed on to us by these same disciples so that we may not make their same mistake as they did and abandon Jesus in his time of suffering. 
My friends, in this instance, we begin to see the true challenge being presented by Jesus in the parable of the Good Samaritan. It is not simply going out and doing good things for good people. It is having that disposition within ourselves to do these things when we do not set out to do them in the first place. We must always cultivate this spirit within us to be holy people whose lives are guided by the Word of God. This guidance is through the Holy Spirit, and we are called to always be aware of the Spirit moving within us and around us so that we too may recognize God present in those among us. Christ calls us in the parable of the Good Samaritan to be holy people. This holiness is one that we are called to constantly work on in our lives and to be models of holiness to those we encounter. In the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus calls us to truly love our neighbor. My brothers and sisters, may we go forward from here ready to be good Samaritans and good Christian disciples so that our lives may someday reflect the holiness of the love of God. May the Spirit of God cultivate within us the seeds of Scripture so that we may one day be holy disciples of Christ. May we never neglect the example of the Good Samaritan as we strive to be holy women and men of God, as we bind our fate to Jesus and his holy cross. God love you. Amen.